So the benefits of knowing the genetics of a disease include heritability and family planning to actually know the precise, accurate diagnosis uh, for counseling for risk of recurrence after a kidney transplant, looking for extra renal manifestations and monitoring of these um, extra renal symptoms. And this can also help advance the understanding of biology and science involved in kidney disease, which can improve therapeutics in the future. So why is genetics important? The heritability of GFR or glomerular filtration rate is estimated to be about 30 to 60% in the general population, and other parameters such as also tubular transport of electrolytes similarly show substantial heritability. Moreover, about up to 30% of adult patients with ESRD report a positive family history across different ethnicities and etiologies. The prognosis disease course and appropriate management can then therefore differ markedly um, between hereditary and acquired uh, forms of kidney disease. And, but these forms can be really indistinguishable when traditional diagnostics are done alone. So the cause of kidney failure is actually classified as unknown in more than one in 10 patients with ESRD. So thus earlier and more specific diagnoses are needed to enable a delivery of effective care. So in terms of genetic ep epidemiology, there's a total of approximately 25,000 genes. Of these, they constitute about over 5,000 Mendelian disorders and approximately 450 monogenic genes are known to cause CKD. Of these, 30% um, are known to cause CKD in the pediatric population. These are rare um, disorders, yet these genetic birth defects can constitute about 8% of live births. And up to 50% of individuals with rare genetic conditions can remain actually undiagnosed. Traditional genetic testing has been done to utilize, has been utilized to detect <clears throat> rare variants in individuals with suspected monogenic disorders. And traditionally, uh, genetic testing has been used in the realm of prenatal screening and the diagnosis and individualization in cancer therapy. But more and more increasingly, genetic, the new genetic technologies are increasingly being applied in non-invasive um, non kidney diseases and uh, for prognostication in patients with uh, kidney disease. So there are a, a wide variety of inherited kidney disorders. There are several hundred genes that are implicated in human kidney disease. And there are so many, for instance, just for podocyte biology, which can cause nephrotic syndrome, there are over 50 genes that are implicated. Uh, these are, it's way too many for, I think, most clinicians to memorize and remember, um, especially also since many uh, Kidney disorders can also be thought of as complex or multifactorial, which is caused by a combination of both genetic and environmental risk. So with this uh, wide spectrum of variety, where about 10% of ESRD um, is, has a genetic cause in adults and seven, up to 70% of ESRD in pediatrics, um, it's really important that uh, genetics play an important part in the workup of these patients. Just showing this uh, slide, which has been seen, I think, in many different um, iterations um, in the past of causes of ESRD, where you can just see that the top causes of e uh, pediatric end-stage kidney disease are CACIT, or congenital anomalies of the kidney and urinary tract, which encompasses renal aplasia, dysplasia, hypoplasia, obstructive uropathy, um, and nephrotic syndrome, FSGS, um, and membranous nephropathy, uh, congenital nephrotic syndrome. And I'll go into a little bit more detail in this talk about some of these um, primary causes of pediatric ESRD and how it relates to genetics. So monogenic kidney diseases can be classified based on the mode of inheritance, as we've heard earlier in this uh, symposium, into autosomal recessive and autosomal dominant. Dominant disease genes may also be manifest by de novo mutations, um, which are also known as non-inherited um, mutations. This phenomenon is virtually absent from recessive diseases because it's extremely unlikely that you can have two de novo mutations occur in the same gene spontaneously. In recessive disease, both, both parental copies or alleles of the monogenic disease gene need to be abnormal or mutated for the disease to actually manifest symptoms. In recessive disease, this is often called full penetrance. An example of a recessive disease that we see in the pediatric population quite often is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, and a dominant disease is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. 
just moving forward a little bit, just to talk a little bit more closely about uh, the penetrance um, of these monogenic alleles in autosomal recessive versus autosomal dominant disease. You can see here in this chart, the x-axis shows the age of disease manifestation in years. Um, and so you can see in the dark blue line, um, if you have a very strong mutation, i.e. a homozygous truncating mutation, which can be shown to be a very strong allele where the penetrance is quite high in an autosomal recessive gene, you can manifest symptoms at the age of 10 years. For another individual with a homozygous mutation in the same disease gene or a mild allele, the age of onset uh, may be a little bit later, and you see the curve move to the right. Uh, the curve can move back uh, forwards and to the right and to the left uh, based on um, the environment too and other factors. So just a very incomplete list of some different types of monogenic kidney disease. Um, there, for nephrotic syndrome, there's FSGS that are from, caused by MPHS1, MPHS2, nephrin and potasin, uh, LAM2, TRPSI6, alpha actinin 4, which are more predominant in the adult population, causing um, genetic FSGS. CACIT, which can be monogenic or polygenic in its inheritance pattern, uh, can be caused by a very large list, which I'll go into in the next slide, um, of, of genes that are mutated in SAW1, RET, PAX2, um, EYA1, and other renal tubular disorders, such as Barter's, Gittleman, and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Uh, some renal cystic ciliopathies that, I've, that have already been mentioned in this uh, symposium so far, ARPKD, ADPKD, the, they are all known to be um, to manifest through uh, monogenic uh, mutations. In addition, nephronopthesis, a primarily a pediatric cystic kidney disease, which is caused by up to 20 different mutations, uh, can also cause nephronopthesis. And then bardet beetle syndrome, a, syn a syndrome that... Um, encompasses a renal cystic disease, and often these patients will require a kidney transplant or some other form of renal replacement therapy. There have been up to at least 22 genes at my last check that are responsible for um, the uh, renal phenotype in Bardet beetle syndrome. So for polygenic diseases on the other side of the spectrum, it's characterized by a weak genotype to phenotype correlation. These diseases usually manifest in adulthood um, and have a weak heritability pattern, which is really subject to modification through environmental factors. So CACIT, the congenital anomalies of the kidney and urinary tract, I had mentioned earlier, um, is, can be, uh, be caused by a monogenic cause, but it can also be part of um, a, a syndrome, and it can also be thought to have the many different genes, and the environment can also impact the development of CACIT. Um, I just listed a little bit um, the different types of cacket that I'm talking about, uh, renal agenesis, hypoplasia, cystic dysp uh, dysplastic kidneys, and vesicle uterine reflux. Nephrolithiasis kidney stones is also thought, can be thought to be a polygenic kidney disease where there is a weak genotype-phenotype correlation, but there are some uh, specific diseases that can cause nephrolithiasis and be caused by just a solitary gene mutation. So polygenic diseases can be characterized by a weak genotype-phenotype correlation, and it's usually manifest during adulthood as opposed to in the pediatric uh, age group. This is just a, a slide looking at the different types of um, CACIT, and like I said before, up to about 20% of CACIT cases can be um, thought to be responsible by these um, monogenic uh, gene mutations, and it can be part of a syndrome, um, yet it can also be... Uh, these, uh, this phenotype can manifest individually, um, in de separate from an actual syndrome. So CACA is important because it can encompass about 40% of ESRD in the pediatric population. Um, it's a frequent cause of birth defects, um, one in 1,000 live births. Um, and there have been over 200 clinical syndromes that can have CACA as part of the renal phenotype. Um, and 40 different monogenic causes of human CACA, 25 being dominant and 15 being recessive. Along the same lines, for glomerular disease, nephrotic syndrome, um, nephrotic syndrome can be caused uh, by a single gene mutation, such as in nephrin and potasin, which I alluded to earlier, or it can be part of a syndrome, such as um, uh, the ones listed here on this page. <laughs>